All right, man, I've seen some stuff since starting off this account takeover series, man, but nothing quite like a level 60 war priest. What is up, guys? This is Cobb, and this account needs our help. We've got some good elements of the account, and we've actually picked up the He-Man in the account, grabbed the Freya as one of the only legendaries on the account, but the champion builds, the champion level up priorities on these. Look at the speed of the Freya. Oh my god, dude. And this is kind of like a recurring theme across a lot of the champions on this account, man. Just a lot of champions with kind of accuracy all over the place. Speed so glacially slow that you literally can't even see the champion move. I mean, we've literally got like a cardboard cutout of Masiliac Priest on here. The guy just doesn't actually move. He's so gosh darn slow. We've got a hell of a lot of work to do on this account, man. I'm pretty sure we're going to be rebuilding every single champion, which don't worry, I'll, I'll make that very, very quick for you guys watching. For me, it's going to be like a two-hour sesh. We're going to talk about some champions that are well worth building out on the account as well, and then I'm going to try and put together some dungeon teams to get us progressing because we're stuck on like stage seven of, uh, of Spider on this account four months in. We can be doing a hell of a lot better than that, man. So, let's help Mr. Drex that out. First off, man, Great Hall. How are we looking over here? You know what? The Great Hall's actually not a disaster. If we were just hard focus on these accuracy nodes now, which it looks like we're starting to do, get all of these accuracy nodes here, these three, up to rank five, and then push one of them up to rank ten. That's great. The Great Hall's not that bad, to be honest. Pretty decent. And actually, the Guardian Ring as well has seen a lot of investment, too. Good stuff. Like, there's some really good elements uh, to this account. It's just the min-maxing of the gear is kind of sus. And the War Priest, of course. But you know what? I'm going to do my best to rebuild her. We've got her at level 60 now, so we might as well rebuild her, right? Oh, God. I mean, we can't use her as a... There's no such thing as a six-star chicken, is there? She's okay. She brings a little bit of healing, at least. I'm not going to riff on the War Priest. Uh, too much. Hey man, if you're going to get involved in this account takeover series, by the way, then the best possible way you can do that is by starting a new account using my beginner promo link, which is down below at the top of the video description box, man. Go ahead and use that link to sign up to raid, and you get yourself a priority pass to get involved in this takeover series, as well as four free epic champions to help get you started, man. It's an incredible, incredible way to start off your new raid account. Then all you've got to do is join my Discord server, which is in the description box as well, and make a post in the account takeover submissions channel to have a chance of getting involved in the series, man. Okay, so where to begin, man? Where to begin? Uh, what are we doing in clan boss? It looks like we're hitting hard clan boss, I guess. The team is a war maiden, Freya, Loki, Kill, Apothecary. Okay, let's so take a quick look around, give you guys an idea of what's going on in this account. I think the fastest champion we have on the whole account is like 150 speed, uh, and that is the high cartoon. How are we doing in a finite, for example? We're up to stage 8. We have an Allure on the account, by the way. So, Finite is actually a solved dungeon if we just get the gear fixed up. Uh, we might be struggling for, like, wave control champs that are actually going to get the Allure to the boss. But uh, besides that, like, Finite's castle should be a doddle to progress in. Spider, I wasn't kidding, man. Stage 7 is where we are currently stuck. And this is the team. Oh, God, we're leveling the Dark. You know, man, leveling the Dark Aethel might not even be too much of a bad idea on this account. I crap on this champion all all the time. We'll see what comes of that, man. Anyways, first things first, dude. We Before we can look at any of the dungeon teams, we gotta rebuild some champs, man. We gotta rebuild some champs. This, what are these, dude, this build personifies everything that's wrong with this account on this uh, L hand from all of the builds I've seen so far. Not only is she very, very slow, like 144 speed, um, she has very, very low attack, really, for like, for, for like a level 60 uh, rare nuka. Very, very low attack, almost no crit rate. But, like, she randomly has high accuracy, even though she doesn't require accuracy with any of her skills at all. I mean, look at look at the chatty, dude. What's going on with the chatty, man? Oh, God. Flat attack boots action plus 15 speed. No accuracy on a champion that actually needs accuracy. You know, the fucking damn prosecutor. The prosecutor's... Oh, my God. He has plus three speed. Or she has plus three speed. Is prosecutor male or female? Oh, okay. It's... it's Probably, probably female. Yeah, you can see what we're working with here, right? You can see what you can see what the issues are, man. At least the high cartoon is not a slug. She could be a little bit faster, but all right, man. Let's start rebuilding stuff. As amusing as it is to just keep on looking around this one. Okay, so I'm actually going to start with the Freya because she's actually uh, almost fully booked as well. And so, yeah, she's also a good example to explain how to actually stat your champions. The first thing that you've got to pay attention to when building your champs in this game to avoid the most rookie mistakes is make sure you check what their skills skill from, right? The first clue is right here. Freya is a defense 
uh, legendary champ. Defense champs, their damage skills usually based on their defense stat. And we check on Freya's skills. Yeah, you can check inner skills at A1. Damage is based on defense. And also his shield scaling as well. Uh, the value of the shield is proportional to this champion's defense. And each time gets max HP. So she just wants as much defense as humanly possible. Um, she does also have a provoke on her A1. And the rule with accuracy is any effect you deal to the enemy that is not damage, right? So it might be stealing buffs or uh, landing a provoke like on the Freya, right? Uh, decreasing the enemy's 10 meter, those kind of things. Anything that's not damage requires accuracy to land and you need about 10 accuracy per dungeon stage that you are clearing. So stage 10 dungeons, you need 100 accuracy. Stage 15 dungeons, 150 accuracy. So on and so forth, right? All right, so this is what the Freya's stats look like before the rebuild. This is what the new set stats are going to look like as we go ahead and switch her on over. Now, of course, uh, a lot of these gear, like a lot of this gear needs to be rolled up during an artifact enhancement event. And once Drexar actually has the silver on the account uh, to roll this gear up. So if you're watching men, yeah, just know that these presets are here ready to be rolled up, man, next time an artifact enhancement event comes by. Basically, we're increasing Freya's accuracy by quite a bit. We're boosting up her speed by a lot when we eventually take these boots up to rank 16, uh, which we should, frankly, just because their accuracy, they've got a bit of HP. The crit is fine on Freya. It's not, it's not the most important stat in the world uh, to prioritize before everything else, but there you go. Defense is fine. It's just overall a big speed tune up to the Freya while also boosting your accuracy as well. So I think this is a fine preset to go ahead and lock in in the preset manager for the Freya. So the next most important champ on this entire account is almost definitely going to be the Kill, who is lacking crit rate. Really want 100% crit rate. The crit damage is very, very low. What's in the amulet? Uh, defense with crit damage over here. The gloves are flat defense. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Okay, so it really needs to either be crit percentage or crit damage. Probably crit percentage uh, given the uh, gear that we have to work with on the account. Um, at least the boots are speed boots with some accuracy rules and stuff. So, okay. There's some pieces here that can stay, but let's just quickly rework this. This is the Kale's weapon that we currently have equipped. It's a four star blue uh, lifesteal weapon. Bit of accuracy here, bit of crit damage. It's fine. HP percentage is a bit wasted on Kale. But look at what's equipped there on this random rare champion that I swear is like level 30 or level 40 or something uh, on this account. All kinds of crit, attack percentage, and speed. Man, that should definitely be on the kill uh, instead. A lot of this is going to be reprioritizing gear that's been equipped on uh, just lower rank champs. I should also say as well that we're going to link a just like basic gearing guide to gearing every single type of champion in raid in the description box below as well. So if you're looking for some fundamentals on how to gear out each champion type, revivers, damage dealers, that kind of thing, that link is going to be down there for you to check out. Okay. And so this is the kill build before and now after, where we're going to go ahead and also switch over one of his rings as well. We're just getting the accuracy up to a much, much better place so that he's ready to take on like stage 15, stage 16 uh, dungeons. With this, we'll also land his debuffs more consistently against hard uh, Demon Lord Clan boss. And also his gloves, uh, crit rate gloves that have speed accuracy rolls right here as well. So hopefully we can hit those substats a little bit more. Once these gloves are fully rolled up, the kill will end up at about 95% crit rate, which... Pretty damn good. Much, much closer to the mark for what we are looking for. Uh, throwing away some of the lesser used defense stats, getting them much, much faster. Yeah, I think this kill is going to work out a hell of a lot better than the one we are using right now. And to be honest, basically all of the gear that we have equipped on the kill right here should pretty much be taken up to rank 16. Um, Because, believe me, this is some of the best gear that we've got on the account. Okay, we're going to get to the Elhin next, who... um, Yeah, the gear is just like completely upside down on the Elhin, so we'll get to fixing this up real fast. Uh, she, so she doesn't need any accuracy at all. We're just looking for as much damage as possible uh, on the Elhin. What are these speed gauntlets with attack percentage rolls doing on a bloody Grenner? The guys are on five. He doesn't need this at all. Okay, yeah, these are definitely going to end up being part of the Elhin build. Unless we take them off of the Eris as well. Um, are we really even using the Eris? I mean, these are some offense set. Could be a little bit of something. Okay, I'm just going to see what I can put together. Top tip, by the way, when rebuilding champs is actually to just go um, the gloves and the chest piece uh, items first. Just look for the highest rank stuff on your account for you. It might, well, you might also want to include some four star pieces and make sure to include the gear pieces that are equipped on champions as well. Uh, it's just going to help to give you more options. Maybe move some gear around that you're not sure about anymore uh, being equipped on like a lower level guy. And yeah, we're looking for attack percentage chest plates. The rule, of course, being that just attack or rather percentage stats are always going to be better 
than uh, flat stats. This chess piece right here for the instinct set could be pretty good. I can't really afford to roll up a whole lot here, but we tried to not hit the accuracy rolls if we can. We actually do hit the crit rate. I think I'm pretty cool to go ahead and slam this uh, instinct piece uh, on the L hen. So, you know what? Things looking pretty all right so far. Uh, once you've went ahead and sorted out the chess piece and the gloves, because you're looking for very specific uh, stats on the chess piece and the gloves, right? That's why you want to kind of cover those first and just get an idea of what kind of sets you might be able to go into uh, when building out a champ. Not that you should prioritize building sets, stats over sets every time, especially in the early game, right? So you're just looking for, it doesn't matter if you don't have a single set like matching on a champion. It's really just about getting the stats sorted out and making sure that you're hitting good stats on your guys. Um, so we actually do have some speed instinct boots as well. All right. That is quite interesting. And so we could potentially go these on the L head and just use her as like a massive direct damage dealer nuka. I almost want to save these instinct boots for somebody else because speed boots with accuracy on are just very, very good for support champions. So we might just go ahead and just like roll these up one time. Crit, uh, crit damage could be good. Okay. Lovely. Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and slam these on, man. And now that we've covered the most difficult uh, artifact pieces first, right? The boots, the chest, and the gloves require very, very specific stats and have a lot of variation in the stats. Then we can go ahead and kind of uh, finish out the build by just filling in all of the blanks and trying to match sets where we can. Doesn't look very likely to me that we're going to be able to match any sets, but, you know. Look at this instinct weapon that's on the random... Uh, what the hell is she called, man? Uh, screw it. Uncommon champion, you know? We could definitely swivel some of these around a little bit. I think we can actually hit an instinct set on uh, the Elhane here without too much trouble, to be honest. Oh man, how was this for a before and after, boys? BAM! Dude! We just like doubled this Dark Elhane's power, man. Not even Dark Elhane. She could be Dark Elhane. That's how insane she is. Okay, so once we go ahead and roll up these uh, gauntlets to max, these max crit rate gauntlets, hopefully hit some crit damage along the way, uh, we'll actually be a little bit over crit cap, but that's okay. It'll be like 105, 104% crit or something once these are fully leveled up. Um, yeah, we actually have the Elhane, uh, Elhane straight up built in just an instinct set, all kinds of attack. This chest isn't rolled up at all. Uh, and she still gained attack. So once all this gear is rolled up, we'll be looking at 100% crit rate. Um, like what, 2500 attack or something like that. His speed is going to finish up somewhere like 170, 175, something. Uh, once these speed boots are rolled up as well. Um, yeah, just excellent, excellent stuff. And we still have room to grow by eventually getting like a crit damage main stat amulet as well. Which is always key on your nukas, right? You want that good crit damage amulet. Um... Yeah, she still has so much room to grow, and the Elhain is going to be so much more powerful as a nuka now with this gear. All right, I've actually got to stay a little bit quiet because my wife is trying to nap in the other room, man. Um, but I did go ahead and I rebuilt the Loki and the, uh, what's this guy called again? The Foley. They've got pre uh, gear presets ready to go. A champ that I want to spotlight here real quick for the sake of uh, Drexa watching this video, man. This champ is going to be integral to the advancement of this account. This champ would be the next champ that I take up to level 60. It would be the next champ that I spend all of my epic skill tomes on. Mycelaic Priest is just a fantastic, fantastic champ to take into Dragon Dungeon. He's great into Ice Golem, two dungeons where Paul Poison damage against the boss is uh, exceptionally, exceptionally powerful. And he's also going to be incredibly good into Demon Lord Clan boss as well. Basically, he applies poison sensitivity debuff. He applies poisons himself. Um, and he also has a chance of activating poisons on his A2 as well, right? Instantly triggering the poison damage. So any boss where poison is great... Clan boss, golem, dragon, he's going to be fantastic. He's going to be especially fantastic when paired up alongside the kill, right? These are going to be like the two damage dealing duo um, that are just going to be carrying you really and carry, uh, carrying your clan boss damage uh, in the early and the mid game. And so this is a champ that we also went ahead and just prepared a preset for uh, on the on. If we go ahead and switch his gear around, he's going to gain a little bit of accuracy here, uh, which is great. A lot of this gear needs to be rolled up. Of course, he should finish up at around 165-ish speed or something like that once all is said and done, uh, once all of this gear is rolled up. And uh, yeah, we're focusing on percentage stats HP percentage and defense percentage on his chest and on his gloves, because even though he's a damage dealer, 
all of Orn's damage pretty much comes from his poisons anyway, so just want to build him tanky. Uh, that's really all there is to it. I think he's actually an HP scaling champion, but yeah. So this is the gear that we have had uh, keyed in for the Orn. So I'm going to rebuild one or two more champions, man, because honestly, we're sort of running out of gear now. That's decent to sort of pass around on the account. I've got to look at the War Priest because it's just hilarious that this champ is even level 60 in the first place. Wouldn't recommend anybody ever take this champ up to 60, to be honest. 50, maybe. There's a debate to be had there, but... Um, 60 is pretty interesting. I uh, will also go ahead and rebuild probably the Apothecary. This guy looks like our chief, like, speed lead. Uh, he's fully booked up as well, which is great. That's lovely to see. We've been prioritizing our skill tomes very, very well uh, on the account, man. So, and yeah, he's another one of those champs that doesn't need any accuracy at all. He's currently sitting on 92, so get rid of all of his accuracy. Just make him as fast as humanly possible. That's like the only thing we give a damn about. And then some defensive stats to make sure, you know, he's not made out of paper and poo. So literally all I'm going to do, man, when re-gearing the apothecary is go into the uh, preset manager. We're going to show equipped gear and stuff as well. I'm going to go on down to uh, hide set filters. I'm just going to have all of the gear shown like this. We're then going to go to priority stats and we're just going to prioritize speed as the highest priority stat uh, available and... That's it. This is just going to rank all of our gear in order of just the fastest gear available. And we're just going to make sure that it is all on the Apothecary, man. Let's see if we can get like a 200 speed Apothecary. We should be aiming for north of 200 speed uh, on our Apothecary at least, I think. Okay, 207 speed. So far, so good. We do have a flat health chest piece here, which we should never rank up ever again, to be honest. Flat stats on gear can be fine if the substats are very very good just happens that we've got a double speed roll here so this is okay but uh no reason to ever take a flat stat item uh like chest or gloves or whatever uh, up to rank 16 just never ever worth it to do um so we're just looking for gloves now so what's the fastest gloves we have on the account it's the ones on the L hand. Did we change those okay so our current speed gloves are actually a double speed roll but they're giving crit rate main stat which eh, we can leave them for now i'm a little bit concerned by the gloves that we have on the uh Dak Aethel, though. Defense percentage main speed, only a little bit of attack. Like, the only thing we care about on these entire gloves for the Elhain is the speed and the small amount of attack. That might be a build I need to look at as well, but I'll go ahead and leave these gloves where they are. Um, yeah, this is going to be vastly, vastly superior uh, for the Apothecary Man. Losing some of that useless accuracy uh, and just gaining a stupid amount of speed. It's it's really all Apothecary cares about. It's just spamming his 10 meter boost uh, as much as he possibly can, so... Let's do it, man. Let's save that as Apotho New. And then on to the War Priest. And you know what's crazy looking at this gear? I think the War Priest is actually the best build champion on the account, which is even more comical, you know? Um, but yeah, we got some HP percentage rolls and speed on the weapon. Fine. The headgear, I thought, okay, it's three stars, but double speed roll, bit of health percentage here too. Fine, you know, the shield. Also a decent man. Defense speed. Not bad, you know? Uh, even, even the gloves, I think, can just stick around for the sake of it this is not a champion we're going to be using a whole lot anyway on the account hp percentage main is fine on the gloves but they're only rank three so we shouldn't be ranking these up to 16 anyway uh the chest is very very questionable we've got like attack percentage here and then flat attack boots which is just absolutely abysmal so we'll go ahead and just jiggle those around for a sec okay and this is what the new war priest gear looks like i mean even without this chest piece and the boots rolled up her speed stays about the same, and her defense stays about the same, so once these are rolled up, uh, she's going to gain all kinds of stats. And finally, just wrapping things up with the Warm Maiden to drastically improve her speed. Of course, she's a debuffer, so she needs to be attacking in uh, first, before our damage dealers, at least, uh, would be most crucial, so we can eventually roll these uh, boots up as well. Also taking away Skeletor's flat stat chest piece, which has a bit of speed. It's not great, you know, but we're doing what we can to uh, make up our accuracy and our speed. So, yeah, we screw up in the bottom of the barrel with the gear that we have available now on this account. So I think we leave it here in terms of builds. Okay, I did tell a little bit of a lie. I'm trying to build out the Allure because she's going to be so, so important for progressing into Finite. She needs good accuracy and she also needs 100% crit rate. But we're just out of 5-star crit rate gauntlets and so I can't get the crit rate up. Uh, ideally, we're going to find some... Decent 5 stack crit rate gauntlets, ideally with some accuracy as a substat, and when she goes up to level 50 as well, she can also get this pinpoint uh, amulet on that could hopefully roll into a bit of more accuracy as well, just to get the accuracy up and running as well. So I'll go ahead and I'll save this build 
to uh, because the Allure will be a future project on this account as well, man, for Mr. Drexar to work on. And now for the teams that I would look to build out and run for each dungeon uh, as we progress on. Okay, so in Ice Golem, it's all about placing decreased attack against the boss. It's about uh, taking the fight slower. You don't necessarily need or want even to be placing things like increase attack on your champs or decrease defense against the boss. The faster you're killing the Ice Golem and the more you're smacking the Ice Golem, the more frequently it's going to counter attack. Okay, so you want to kind of take it a little bit slow, man. So we've got the Freya increased defense uh, aura as the aura lead, right? To uh, increase our survivability a little bit. She's also going to bring increased defense for our team, which is great. It's going to help us survive against the boss itself. Our damage dealers can be Kill and Massiliac Priest on. Poisons are super, super effective into the Ice Golem because if the Ice Golem goes beyond a certain threshold of HP, for example, it drops to like 60% health from like 70%, that's when it's going to trigger a counterattack from the boss. But if its health drops via poisons, it doesn't trigger the counterattack. So just a little top tip for you there, man. So poison damage dealers uh, in the Ice Golem are going to be great. Uh, Skiramis as some extra wave control would be fantastic here. Not only does Skiramis bring an AoE provoke uh, once he's actually ascended up, but he also brings a decreased attack debuff as well on his A2. So fantastic, fantastic champion for just team survivability and kind of getting your way through the waves uh, into Ice Golem. Really, really good. And a healer is almost always necessary for progression in Ice Golem as well. And so we go ahead and throw the, the Demitha in there as the healer healer role. And yeah, to be honest, this team should be able to get to at least stage 16, at the very, very least, if not all the way up to stage 20, to be honest, with quite a slow ice golem clear. Next up, we've got the spider dungeon, where we are stuck on stage 7. This is the team that I would recommend uh, for spider. We'd have the high Ketune, not the apothecary, as our speed option here, because she can be the speed or a lead and get your team moving as fast as humanly possible. Um, our two damage dealers for just clearing the spiderlings as much as we can uh, would be kill and L. Hand. Clearing the spiderlings constantly with damage can work until like stage 14, stage 15, something like that in the early game. But then in the early game, you start to run out of damage and you're, uh, you're going to start to struggle to kill off the spiderlings consistently, right? So ideally, you want to be on the lookout for a good um, AoE stun champion that can just control all of the spiderlings. And then we can throw something like Armager and Allure on the team to just control the boss's turn meter. And then that's the way that you can kill the boss instead. Just constantly crowd controlling the spiderlings and then controlling the boss's turn meter is a great way to handle spider. And then, you know, replacing damage dealers with like HP burn champions and um, max HP damage dealers and stuff like that. But for now, I think that this team would be fine. Freya's just going to offer some block, uh, some block debuffs, a little bit of AoE damage with the A1 as well. And the Cherel is also going to be quite solid too. He's been ranked up to rank 5, but is currently just sitting at rank 5. He brings a bit of 10 meter control. Uh, he brings an AoE decreased defense. Uh, but mostly the 10 meter control is going to be great uh, into Spider's Den. But I would also we recommend that we actually use Tyrell in the Demon Lord clan boss team as well. But we'll get to that when we get to it. So I think this is a champ worth taking up to at least level 50 uh, on this account also. Now, next up, we have the good old Dragon Slayer, which... Of course, is the opposite of Ice Golem. You just want to kill the boss as quickly as humanly possible. And so this is the team that I would have keyed in for Dragon. Once again, we've got the Skiramis. The Skiramis could be replaced by the uh, Freya here, by the way. We're just looking for a champ that's just going to get us through the waves and just make sure that, uh, yeah, that, that if we're not able to just one-shot our way through all of the waves, like with the kills damage or whatever, then uh, we've got a champion that's kind of like a backup and just going to keep our team alive and just get us to the boss. So this could be Freya. Could be Skiramis, um, kind of interchangeable. Uh, our two damage dealers, again, Masilic Priest and the Kale for just massive, massive poison damage against the boss. Uh, we also got to throw the War Maiden in there too to help us clear through the waves with the decreased defense and also, um, of course, clear up the kill speed against the boss. And our very, very fast Apothecary is going to be spamming his increased speed buff the entire time as well. The entire point against the Dragon Boss is just to kill it as quickly as you possibly can. You're kind of on like a soft enraged timer kind of thing against the Dragon. And so, yeah, this team would function very, very nicely into it. Again, stage 16 should be very, very achievable with this team, if not pushing all the way up to stage 20 with proper gear. And Finite's Castle, last of the dungeons before we get to Clan Boss. Um, we're currently stuck on stage 8. We definitely have the team to absolutely annihilate uh, Finite in my view. This is the team that I would run. Again, the High Katoon is the speed aura lead. You want to be as fast as possible against the boss. She also brings a decreased speed debuff on her air 1, as well as a little bit of 10 meter control on her air 3, I think it is. Um, and then, of course, the speed buff as well, um, the increased speed buff. Um, we then run the Kale and 
also the Skiramis again, or the Freya, just to try and get us through the waves. The waves can be really, really annoying uh, into Finite. Getting to the boss tends to be the hardest challenge into Finite, to be honest. Um, actually controlling the boss when you've got the likes of an Allure and a Foley on your team is going to be very, very easy, right? You just want multi-hitters. Um, the Allure, I've also prepared a build for her as well, like we already covered, with 100% crit, good accuracy. And then she's just set in the team AI to spam the hell out of her A1 and only her A1 against the boss, which is going to you know, triple hit her, decrease the tank as tamed by 25% on each crit, which is why she's got to have 100% crit, right? Um, so, yeah, it's just about getting to the boss and just controlling that 10 meter man, and that's really all there is to it. Foley's also a big multi-hitter as well, brings a little bit of 10 meter decrease on his skills too, so he can also play a pretty good part in our finite team. Now, if we were to bring another champion to the table that has a more reliable... Um, decrease speed debuff than the A1 on the Hiker Tune. this team could very, very comfortably uh, go all the way in Finite, to be honest. But right now, it might be a little bit sketch to push too high, like like be too far beyond like stage 15, 16, uh, with the Hiker Tune's kind of unreliable decrease speed debuff on the A1, man. It's just a pretty low land rate. Um, next up, we've got the Demon Lord Clan Boss team, which this is the team that we're currently running, I guess. Um, the team that I would recommend we run instead would be a little bit something like this. Oh, hang on. I've got the Tyrell in the wrong slot there. There we go. Okay. So yeah, the Freya is the aura lead for the increased ally defense aura. Um, defense and defensive stats, again, very, very important into Demon Lord Clan boss. It's kind of like a giant dragon boss, to be honest, right? So we're running a very, very similar team indeed. Uh, Freya is the aura lead. She also brings increased defense buff, which is great. The Tyrell, again, I would highly recommend we take the Tyrell up to 50 and include him in this team as one of those defensive options because not only is he going to be placing decreased defense against the boss, which is going to help out our damage, but he also brings a decreased attack, strong 50% version uh, on his air one skill as well. So he's going to, again, drastically increase the amount of turns that we can survive against the Demon Lord. We then run our very, very fast Apothecary to just keep the team running like a well-oiled machine. His heals are also going to be quite useful too. And then our two big damage dealers will be our Poisoners, Basiliac Priest, and Kill. And this should be a great Demon Lord clan boss team to get us progressing pretty solidly into uh, Brutal Clan boss, at least. Maybe able to like two key Brutal or something with this team. Maybe even a little bit better. Maybe I'm underestimating it a bit. I don't know. I think this is a pretty good team though for us to start building out. The GLDR for this account would be fully max up and fully book up the Massiliac Priest on as quickly as possible. This guy's going to be great into Demon Lord and into Dragon. Then I take the Tyrell up to level 50, potentially level 60 in time, but uh, at least level 50 on this guy. Pretty damn solid champion, again, for us to take into just multiple areas of the game. He's just a great all-rounder champ for us to build out. Um, we're going to be using the Freya a hell of a lot more as well. As far as homework goes, I would highly, highly recommend, again, that very, very basic sort of gearing guide uh, that's down below in the video description box for Mr. Drexar, so they can look to start gearing out his own champions in the future. And most importantly, wait until there is a new um, free gear removal event active before going into these artifact filters right here and just getting all of these presets equipped, right? I, you don't want to be paying like 100. It's going to cost just millions and millions of silver to remove all of this gear and replace it with all of the builds that I've suggested here um, across all of the champions for which I've done it. So, um... Yeah, wait until there's a free gear removal event active and ideally an artifact enhancement event active as well before you start rolling this new gear up uh, all around. And so... Yeah, I think we did an okay job. There was a hell of a lot to do on this one, man. There's a hell of a lot to do on this one. I hope that I did help out, man. I hope it helped out some of you guys watching as well to avoid some of these beginner mistakes. All right, man. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all did enjoy. Once again, if you're looking to create a new raid Shadow Legends account and get involved in this account to take over series, then the best possible way you can do that is simply by signing up to raid using my beginner promo link, which is down below at the top of the video description box. And join my Discord while you're down there. All right, thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your nights. I'm going to catch all of you all just a tad bit later, man.